Hey everyone, uh, today we're going to take a look at how to create a rubric uh, within Moodle in order to assess an assignment for your class. So what I have over here on the right hand side is an example rubric that you would usually see. Um, you can do some different things within uh, Moodle as far as how many uh, criterion your rubric has and what all the levels are and even having different levels for different criterion. Um, but in general, uh, most rubrics are going to have the criterion listed on the left and then the, the levels for uh, student achievement um, and assessment on the, the right hand side. So what I'm going to do is take this rubric that is in Microsoft Word right now and really do a lot of copying and pasting in order to build this structure into an assignment. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go over to the actual assignment where this rubric is going to be placed and I'm going to edit the settings for this assignment. Scrolling down to where we have the uh, grade section, um, I am going to change the grading method into a rubric. Now once I have done that and I going to hit save and display for this assignment again you're going to see a define new rubric from scratch or create one using a template uh, and you can save your rubrics so that you can use them again in different assignments um, for this example I'm going to create a new rubric from scratch uh, and I'm just going to um, give this rubric the title that was given over on uh, Microsoft Word Uh, if there's a description or things that you want um, about this rubric, what it is, you could enter that here. Um, I'm going to skip that and come down to where I have the rubric structure. Um, now, looking at the one in Microsoft Word, I see I have one, two, three, four, five, six different levels of the rubric um, criterion, all worth four points. Uh, one of the things that's important to note in Moodle, in order for the grade to be understood as a mathematical um, number, you really have to have a level zero. So I'm going to put five levels in here. One of them is going to be zero, and I usually re reserve that for not available or just not done. Um, so on here, I am going to add uh, another level so that I have zero, one, two, three, and four points. Um, I'm also going to uh, add criterions. If you remember, I said I had six of them. So I have one, two, three, four, five, six criterion now listed. Now, the next step um, for this rubric is simply to go through and copy and paste um, really the, the different things that I have from, uh, from Microsoft Word over into here. So I am just going to click on each of these different levels and add, add the description um, that is done for uh, or that is added for the the rubric so now one of the things that I typically do um, with this rubric is I make one that isn't worth any points just to have all of the the different um, topics or I suppose the names of the level kind of describe so you're gonna see I put in the level and for the description I put in what is um, being judged in that rubric but I'm gonna go ahead and move one of these levels up and I'm just going to label this as topic so now I've added um, the introductory or kind of the top level in here and that's just for the the viewing of this um, you're also going to notice that I clicked on each of these things and changed the points to zero because I don't want to accidentally give somebody extra points by clicking on this level of the rubric that's just there organizationally. Um, so now I actually am going to end up adding one more criterion at the bottom so that I still have my six criterion. And for each of these levels, I am just going to paste the description um, from Microsoft Word. So I'm going to take a moment and finish that up. So now that I have the rubric finished, you'll see that I have the, the descriptions at the top. And again, this is optional. You don't need this level here. Um, they're all zero points because they're just descriptions. Uh, I have each of the levels defined, um, except for the, 
the not available or the failing or whatever you want it to do. Um, I'll point out that at the bottom of this section is a series of questions for people to think about. And the one that I'm doing right now is the most confusing part, which is why I always add this zero level in here to make it more transparent. Um, this calculate grade based on the rubric having a minimum score of zero. Um, if the minimum score isn't a zero, it maps the one to a zero, saying that if you score all ones, you're really getting a zero points, and it changes the weighting. And people are used to thinking, if I get all threes um, in this, all threes out of um, four, I should have a 75%. And if you don't have the zero column in here, that messes it up. And the this, this first checkbox really then becomes very confusing. So um, I do calculate based on it having a minimum score of zero, and I put a zero in there. Um, these other things are just optional as to whether or not you want the grader to put remarks like comments for each section. Um, if you want those remarks shown to the people being graded, uh, whether or not the students should see the rubric as they're putting in the assignment, etc. Um, I usually leave all of these things on. Now, when you are finished with the rubric, uh, you can save this as a draft if you're not finished with it um, in order to come back in underneath the assignment and underneath the gear menu you can look at the define rubric um, and it will bring you back into this draft section when you are ready for this rubric to be done and you can always change it afterwards you can save the rubric and make it ready and then when you are done with that, you can also publish this as a new template. Like if you wanted to use this rubric for something else, um, you could publish it, making it uh, so that other people could use it. Um, I recommend possibly doing that. You don't have to. Um, you can always find your own rubrics when you're defining a rubric from a template, and I'll show you that in just a second. So. This rubric um, is saved and ready to go. So now if I were to go back in and I don't think this assignment has any of the, the students working on it, um, but if I go back to the assignment and hit the grade section, um, it would pull up in this area on the right hand side um, the rubric. And you'll notice I have a place to comment for each one and it would just be a matter of clicking on the different things in order to apply those points. Um, I am going to cancel um, cancel that. So um, that's what it would look like. And if you haven't used the grade section, you'll also notice that in here I have a preview of what the student submitted. If it's a paper, um, PDF, or Word, um, I can drop down between all of the users on the right-hand side. Uh, I can make this, uh, as I did a second ago, I can make this a um, a window that's a little bit bigger so that I can see it. I can also, depending on the size of my screen, um, make this full screen uh, and change the layout so that perhaps I'm viewing more of the rubric or um, the everything else that goes along with it. So, so depending on the screen size, you can you can change what you're looking at in here. Um, but that is how to create the rubric. Um, the next part is I'm going to jump down. I believe there's a second part to this. Um, that is going to use the same rubric. And let me check my email. Down here in week 15, there is a paper as well that I am going to do these same things again. Let me pull this over here, edit the settings. Um, this time, when I go into the grade and I select the grading method of a rubric, I am going to um, save and display and then uh, create a new rubric from a template. Now this would normally show me all of the rubrics that were here. I am going to tell it to also include my own forms so you can see all the public rubrics um, plus the ones that you have created. Um, so here are the ones that are own forms and I have a, a bunch so I'm going to, I think this one had the word psychology in the title. Um, I'm going to look for that rubric. You can preview it here and then use this form as a template. Um, that will put the rubric in here. You can always make modifications to that rubric after um, you have 
have done that so now it's using that rubric but I could edit this rubric a little bit and it again um, I don't have to uh, if I want to create a brand new one I can but now this rubric is attached to the second assignment you'll see that it is ready for use so hopefully that gives you a little bit more understanding on how the rubrics work um, and what they're uh, how to put them into Moodle. Um, the one thing that I always, and I'm going to close this with my encouragement, is think about the levels of your rubric. Um, for example, this rubric right now, um, scoring all in this category would net you an A, obviously. Scoring all threes is 75%. Um, so you're probably in that C range. What um, I sometimes find a little worrisome is when I get down to this, um, there's still a category under here. So this is an A, um, somewhere in the C, this is an F, scoring all twos, and scoring all ones is an even worse F. Um, so I a lot of times encourage people to think about the lowest level as being the F, um, which means for me, I would possibly have zero, then two out of four. That's 50%, um, but that's still uh, an F. It's actually probably the very bottom of the F on your scale. Um, and then I would change these in here to, to reflect most likely a little bit below a C, so probably that D range, um, and a little bit above a C, since Technically, I only have four. Um, really, I end up thinking of it as, as F, D, B, and A because a combination of some of those ones in the middle should, should average you out to about a C. Um, that's my advice in that, but it's completely up to you. You can also change and have different points for the different levels. They don't all have to match 0, 1, 2, 3, 4 as I do here. But uh, like I said, hopefully that will help you get started and get you on your way to um, using rubrics in your Moodle assessments.